Hello and welcome back to my channel and today we're gonna do something pretty cool. We have three graphics cards. You have the overclocked version of the MSI 980 Ti. Also say hello to my doggy dog. We got the 1080 Ti from Nvidia which is a Kingpin edition. And we have RTX 2080 Ti from EVGA. Not entirely sure if it's factory overclocked or not, since it's EVG, I would kind of assume so. So, what we, why and how and what we're gonna do today? It's pretty simple. Uh, considering today's climate of the 3000 series shortage and scalping and everyone buys them out, people are basically pushed to buy either 1080 or 2080 or fall back to the something with a bit more video memory, which is 980, 980 Ti or 1060s. Considering these are basically the three top performing cards of their respective times, I think it's just, you know, kind of expected for us to benchmark them a bit. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with 980, we're going to run it through Valhalla, we're going to run it through Metro Exodus, we're going to run it through Cyberpunk. All settings cranked out, uh, 4040p, and see which ones will be the winners. I would kind of say 2080, uh, 2080 Ti, for obvious reasons, but we'll see. Anyway, time for me to put them one by one into my PC and uh, do this. So, see you in a bit. So, here we are, and the first one in the rig is the MSI 980 Ti with 6 gigs of VRAM. And let's just go through the settings and see what we have. So we, as I said, gonna run this on 4040p and everything maxed out in terms of the quality. Now, some might argue that this card is not meant for this game on this resolution for these settings, but at the same time, let's just crank it. I mean, if we would test things on low, then to be honest, even 1050 Ti would do the job, but hey, if you aim for the stars, then you will still land somewhere between the stars. I don't know what the saying was, okay? Anyway, so we are actually fully maxed out. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the in-game benchmark first. And then we're going to do the actual in-game quick walk around with Eivor in a snowy mountain. And that will be done for every card. So we're going to start with Valhalla. We're going to move down to Cyberpunk. And we're going to finish off with Metro Exodus, I hope. Uh, please note that uh, since I'm going to be swapping these cards back and forth, uh, some of the tests for the cards might sound out of context because I honestly have no idea how these tests are going to go. So basically, I'll, I'll try to make it in a nice, timely manner, but no, no promises. So let's do the benchmark first and see what we have. I already know that uh, for my 1080 Ti that I use, this game was running sub 60. Um, we're talking about 58 frames usually on average and that's in 4040p with 11 gigabytes of VRAM to spare so for this card with only six that's gonna be a chore to beat however let's uh, take a look maybe it's gonna prove me wrong which would be really nice for a change and we're not even close to 60 so we are starting at 30 frames so yeah so all the settings on the right hand side you can see what's been set up so we are with uh, pretty much everything maxed out and it even recognizes it as a 980, sweet. Yeah. Okay, so probably 4040p for this game on 980 Ti is a bit of a stretch, uh, which I must say is fully understandable. Also, this is a Ubisoft title, so <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of hoping for 2080 to finally blow it out of the water but you you, you wouldn't need a 10 2080 to play Ubisoft titles because I remember my adventures with Ubisoft titles and different GPUs we benchmarked on this channel I don't know you need to literally rock the, the best card out there to, to have different frames but oh well I mean that's kind of one of the things also this is synthetic benchmark so don't take the result too close to heart we probably have lost about one frame due to recording with Nvidia Shadowplay. I did try this game without uh, recording and I must say it's roughly one to two frame stops. Uh, the game is running off from SSD as all of the games we're going to test today just to limit any possible data bottlenecks. 
So yeah, uh, we do have some crazy drops here. Minimum frames are 15, average is 33. So if you are not playing on 4040p all maxed out, I do believe you will be pretty fine because hey, you still have six gigabytes of video memory to play around with. So let's do a quick walk around with Eivor and we're gonna see how it is. So MSI benchmark uh, on the upper left corner, we're gonna see the real time metrics or the closest ones and we'll kind of will be able to do an educated guess so let's just hit continue here i do believe this card will pretty much uh, choke itself out in ex of existence with cyberpunk uh, metro exodus i'm pretty sure it will be all right because metro exodus uh, it does look good but it's not really that demanding title uh, these games is pretty much handpicked because of the them being gpu bound so let's just run around. So we are actually pretty much within uh, 40 frames for now, and we're using 5.7 gigs of video memory, which is well within what needs to be done. So we are kind of down to 30 frames. I wouldn't say I can, I notice any lags or stutter, but again, there's nothing really going on on the screen here. So yeah, well, it plays, and to be honest, full HD, I think you can be pretty well set with probably high settings, because there's very little difference in games when it comes to ultra high and high settings. So yeah, it's not too bad, to be fair. Anyway, let's move on. So here we are with a 980 Ti with Cyberpunk and obviously we're gonna continue exactly where we did 4040p and everything maxed out so there is a difference uh, so for quick presets I'm gonna be I'll try to use high however if you see a custom here it means that one of the settings like for instance motion blur need to be adjusted and it automatically goes for custom same goes for vertical sync if I disable or enable or technically disable it and as you can see nothing really applied here for the high so i kind of need to do this m manually and that automatically will put it on custom so just keep that in mind and i think we are pretty well here let's just double check everything this game never never wants to actually play nice when it's about benchmarking it it's almost like it's not meant to be benchmarked we are running uh, Cyberpunk 1.23 after all the patches, so I'm kind of curious how it's going to run. Anyway, let's load the game, which is uh, in the city, so we're getting 450 something frames. I do believe we're going to be down to 10, but hey, this is what this channel is about. I must say, this is one very hot card. Now shut, shut the hell up, Takemura. How are we able to hear him from all this distance away? Okay, so this card is running close to 80 degrees, holy fucking shit. We are pulling 5.5 gigs of video memory and we're getting about 24-25 frames. Which, to be fair, is exactly as the people have actually reported throughout all the time since the game was released. I was kind of hoping that uh, all these patches will fix it, but... Um, it doesn't really look like it's gonna fix anytime soon. We're at we're literally we're 20 frames now. It's, it's not really nice to, to walk around. It's kind of... I, I wouldn't say it's laggy, but it's slow. I don't know. I Honestly, I... <laughs> <laughs> this this is fun. I mean, but it but it works right, and it's also hitting eighty degrees. So whoever, I might actually do some TLC for that card just before I return it to its rightful owner because eighty degrees for nine eighty Ti. Well, technically it's kind of within the temperature threshold, but it's not really healthy. Also, uh, 
it is an open case setup for me so I kind of might need to take a look at this but anyway yeah um, it is pretty terrible we have 41 milliseconds of the GPU and 23 frames crazy let's move on so the next stop for our 980 Ti is actually Metro Exodus so as you saw on Cyberpunk it wasn't really playing nice at all uh, the card is still running pretty hot even on this main screen it's kinda 69 degrees I did adjust the fan curve to basically 95% so it's running very loud you might even hear, hear it in the background but oh well what can I do let's just get this over with so we are on extreme quality with uh, DirectX 12 hair walks are off I don't really want to kill this card and we are 4040p as well so let's just uh, continue on and see how we get on when it has been years since anyone's heard anything but static and white noise on the radio who could still believe we are not alone on this earth my wife, my comrades from the Order, my friends. Okay, so here we are, and we are getting 40 frames. Again, um, same thing as before with Valhalla. 40, 40p might be an overkill for this card, and maybe specifically for this game, because to be honest, uh, Full HD would be the correct one to be put for the games to be played on this. Warzone can be played with 1080 Ti, but not on Ultra settings though. That's been tested before, but uh, yeah, to be honest, it's not really that bad. So, we'll just walk around a bit and see how we get on here. Have you been to all these ruins? See all the destruction. And Moscow had the best anti-air defenses in the country. It's yeah, so we're pretty much uh, very stable on 40 frames. Which is not bad, to be honest, for this game and this card. Look, maybe you should come back to the order. We'll move to Volus. Dad says he'll arrange a flight for us. Because if not us, then who? A flat with a kitchen and a shower. Yeah, I think that's pretty much uh, enough to understand the performance of this. And I'm stuck, so that's good. Eh, oh well. Kinda on me. Anyway, so we are pretty much on 40 ish frames, so again, everything maxed out. 4040p. I would say full HD maxed out you will be well within 60 frames with 980 Ti on Metro Exodus and yeah that's pretty much all there is. So let's move on to the 1080 range and see what the result we see there. See you in a sec. So we are back with 1080 Ti and let's just kick it off with Valhalla obviously. So, eh, before we jump in, let's check out that we have all the settings exactly with the 980. So we have we are on 4040p, vertical sync is off, graphics are fully maxed out. We are technically taking, well, the game predicts to take 6.2 gigs uh, of video memory. So let's run a quick benchmark and then we'll do a live, very short walk around with Eivor on a snowy mountain, see the actual in-game performance. In comparison to 980, uh, I would say we will get sub 60. This game is very weird when it comes to it, but uh, 4040p is definitely not its cup of tea for this card. So again, this is kind of like the new title, but it's also a Ubisoft title, so keep that in mind. So we are off on a very bad start. We're sub 60 already with uh, little jumps here and there, so a little bit of stuttering. I would say this is exactly what I expected. Uh, to be honest, there's very few titles from Ubisoft that actually work as expected for the hardware that's been outlined. And 1080 Ti was kind of optimal for Full HD gaming. And on Full HD, I must say, yes, it's always above 60, 40, 40p. It's kind of not really pulling its weight. The game is uh, GPU bound rather than CPU bound, which is 
not really surprising the the same trade for this engine is going for well breakpoint and uh, wildlands so we're basically seeing exactly the same thing here however when it comes to breakpoint uh, with 1080 ti it runs perfectly smooth above 60 on 4040p if you are using the vulcan api uh, for this game there's no selection which api you want to use so we just have to use what we have so it looks pretty decent uh, well in terms of the graphical fidelity but again it, it could be better i mean just in comparison with odyssey they they literally cheaped out on valhalla but oh well we get what we get so as yeah pretty much what i expected so sub 60 performance some drops here and there which is always present uh, for ubisoft titles instead of 6.2 gigs as you can see on upper left corner we are pulling 6.8 so extra vram is definitely coming in handy here so now let's just uh, continue run around the actual world and we'll we'll see how it goes i do ex i do believe it's gonna be way better performance with 1080 ti i mean 2080 ti because we, we can't really compare 1080 and 2080 i mean there is a performance boost definitely i'm just a bit curious how much performance boost is gonna be So, it's not too bad actually. Let's get some inbuilt benchmark running. So, they're kind of 60 ish. Well, sub 60 most of the time. Nothing really going on on the screen. And GPU usage is 98%. We are pulling 6.1 gigs of VRM. And yeah, full HD was way better for this game i don't know it could be a lot of things but it is what it is uh i don't know i <laughs> it's very hard for me to defend ubisoft title when it comes to performance but the numbers don't lie so unless we're gonna see very significant difference with the uh, 2080 eh. this warriors crawl through Arbol's nest like lice but they use the main gate and may attract attention uh, another wisdom words but yeah basically if we do nothing we're kind of averaging out at 55 frames there is we are recording at the same time but to be honest it only cost us like what a couple frames at max so as soon as we have to draw all the things we we're losing frames so that's it let's move on so as you can see we are actually back to cyberpunk exactly and yep yeah, still the same version 123 just in case for those who say that i'm switching versions in mid because apparently that's a thing and let's just take a look at the settings to make sure nothing's changed so we are on custom for the quick piece preset for the simple reason if we are going for the high as we are preset it will enable vertical sync and that's something we don't really want to have so in terms of uh, well all the options we are pretty much maxed out apart from the dlss and ray tracing because 1080 doesn't really support that features and video wise again we are 4040p full screen with vertical sync off so that's pretty much all there is so let's just jump in and take a look Okay, so we are actually in the city itself, and obviously this is kind of on purpose. Takemura, honestly, shut the fuck up. So we are basically sub 30 frames, kind of 33-ish. Uh, GPU usage 99%, we're pulling 5.8 gigs of video memory. Um, well, I must say this, uh, this is kind of expected. Again, um... My hopes are on 2080 Ti for this game, but to be honest, even with 1.23, which is patched up from all the way from 
Uh, looks like the game performance is still not really improved that much. Uh, at the same time, if you actually watch my previous videos about uh, Cyberpunk in graphical comparison, there's very little difference from Ultra and High or Medium. So, to be honest, if you really want to max this game out, I do believe you kind of need to just wait until they patches everything. But yeah, so far it's actually not 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 anything that I did not expect. This is exactly the performance I was kind of looking forward. Well, I wasn't looking forward sub 30 frames but at the same time it is what it is and we are 4040p so that definitely puts some strain on the gpu and i wouldn't say it's not playable but it's definitely not optimal because as you can see all this it's not lagging it's just slow so yeah you, you kind of want to have those 60 frames full hd for 1080p resolution should you give you about 55 60 frames uh, 4040p not that much so yeah 1080 Ti, not really the best candidate for this game on all maxed out. Let's move on. So here we are, 1080 Ti and Metro Exodus. And let's check the options are still good for us. 4040p, extreme quality, vertical sync off. And I kind of expect uh, 60 plus frame gameplay on this card. Uh, game is not really perfectly optimized. I mean, it does favor better graphics cards for sure, but for 4040p, I mean, we should have no issues whatsoever. So let's just hit continue and see where we end up. When it has been years since anyone's heard anything but static and white noise on the radio, who could still believe we are not alone on this earth? My wife, my comrades from the Order, my friends... Okay, so the open world and we are 74, 72 frames, currently 90, but there's not really much going on. Uh, to be honest, I I don't see the point of uh, worrying about Metro Exodus being played with anything above 980 Ti, to be completely fair, because the 10 series GPUs are pretty good and the requirements for this game is 1060, to be honest, so... As soon as you are above 9 series, you should be completely okay. Apart and except if you're running 1050 or 1050 Ti, th those are not even GPUs. I mean, technically they are, but the performance is, is pretty terrible anyway. So, yeah, I mean, it, it looks nice and dandy and it, it, it just works, <laughs> you know? So yeah, exactly as I expected, there's no issues with this game's performance Look, with 1080 Ti. come back to the order. We'll move to Polis. Dad says he'll arrange a flat for us. We are in a flat. Because if not us, then who? So yeah, I would say this is, again, 1080 Ti and Metro Exodus, no issues whatsoever. In 4040p, fully maxed out. That's exactly what I would expect, so... Your turn now. Let's move on. So here we are with our last contestant, which is, uh, well, EVGA's uh, 2080 Ti. And let's just uh, take a look at all the settings. So we are running 4040p. It actually does recognize it as a 2080 Ti. And uh, graphics are obviously ultra high on everything. So I think this is going to blow out 1080 out of the water. So let's start with the benchmark first and see how it actually goes. I would expect this to have a constant 85 frames. So the 1080 Ti was sub 60 for 2080 Ti. I mean, to see an actual performance increase, I would say we need 85 frames. 4040p all maxed out, all this processing power, it needs to work. If this card gets sub 60, well, that's on uh, that's on Ubisoft then. It's, there's, there's no other way then. <laughs> well, at least we are above 60, so that is good. So vertical sync is off. We don't have any FPS limit. 
and yeah GPU usage 96% um, a bit weird again but we've seen this before I would say this is this is the Ubisoft code at its finest it does seem a bit smoother though not as many dips as with the 1080 definitely not as bad as the 980 Ti but we are talking about the top performing card currently that you can actually get your hands on obviously I've seen all those scalpers and everyone else just selling 2080 Ti's for 1500 close to 2000 because of the NVIDIA's shortage and even Radeon is not actually doing too well at this point to be completely honest with you so there's a global GPU sort uh, shortage shortage <laughs> there's nothing is sorted there is global shortage so yeah but I would say we are kind of averaging out about 70 frames which is an improvement yes it is a performance boost uh, when you look at it I would still kind of expect a bit more so 1080 Ti was what 58 frames and this one is 69 so we're talking about 10 to 11 12 frame increase for well almost twice the price so yeah I don't know like, of course it, it's much better to play on 69 frames than on 58 but if you take away the the price and performance gain and considering the 3000 series is out and about uh, kind of hard it's, it's nice to see these numbers not gonna lie but if I had to just cash out and, and get this card for the price it's currently going for mm, I would probably think twice specifically if I'm sitting on 1080 Ti anyway let's give it a little tiny run of the mill exactly where AWO was and uh, run around the mountain see how it is I do believe the performance will be roughly the same about 70 fr uh, frames and yeah weird right I mean a little tiny dip right there you could literally see it on a graph but as I said this happens throughout all the Ubisoft games it doesn't matter and we, we've benchmarked so many of those titles so many GPUs and different PCs as well by the way so it's not just you know oh it's your PC that sucks uh, no unfortunately we had the ability to do a different board different CPU different RAM different hard drives hard drives and SSDs we are running all of this from SSD so yeah we don't have a constant frame so it's not like hovering above let's say 70 it's jumping up and down and this is the weirdest thing about the Ubisoft engine like even if you don't move your mouse you can see how everything's kind of jumping up and down so it might actually settle eventually so we are kind of roughly 80-ish frames which I would expect from this card absolutely but the next one up is Cyberpunk and this is where the real fun begins let's check it out so here we are Cyberpunk 2077 still yes 1.23 nothing changes <laughs> in between our previous two cards uh, let's take a look at our settings so video we are still 4040p full screen vertical sync is off graphics high preset on custom pretty much the same as with 1080 ti because these cards uh, doesn't really change the settings when i plugged in the 980 all the settings kind of depending on the hardware automatically drop down to low and medium and we kind of need to force it all up uh, but for now yeah all this looks good so let's just load the game back on the same point on the street with Takemura and let's see. The moment of truth. okay so this is clearly an improvement uh, so we are actually running almost 60 frames holy shit 4040p all maxed out there is no DLSS uh, enabled uh, there's no RTX enabled but 
I think we can actually do that in a second. So far, it's almost 60 frames, so to be completely honest, this is by far the best score in between all these three cards. So the 980 Ti, if you remember, it was struggling of basically 20 frames. The 1080 Ti was kind of chugging along of 35, 30-ish, uh, sometimes hitting 40, but this is close to 60 at all times, and yeah, you know what? Let's just do... Let's do the DLSS. Uh, let's go for automatic and enable all these uh, resolution scaling. Yeah, fine. Let's let, let, let's do this. Okay, what happened? Holy shit! Eighty-two frames. And it does look different. Hold up. Hold your horses. So we need to investigate. Quick preset custom. Okay. Ray tracing off. No, ray tracing should be on. What the hell? On, on. All of this. Ray trace lightning. Psycho. DLSS automatic. Performance. Ultra performance. What the hell? Should be automatic. Okay, let's see what happens now. Okay, so this is a bit more realistic. Something just rendered into existence here. 44 frames. And... Something just literally disappeared from our vision here. So 44 frames. Uh, the reflections are kind of nice, not gonna lie. Uh, but uh, <coughs> I don't know, is it worth for this sacrifice uh, back to 43 frames? Not too sure about it, you know? Two identical models. Great stuff, uh, just twins walking around, cool. I don't know, I, I, would, say I would usually take close to 60 over some eye candy when it comes to ray tracing any time of the day. So yeah, basically if you are using RTX and DLSS, DLSS was the kicker, it was actually giving us close to 60. RTX reflections, we are we're taking the performance penalty to 42, 40-ish, so 44 give or take. So if we are not using this and you are running 2080 or, you know, 2080, 2060, 2070, I do believe you're gonna be okay. You know, and again, 4040p all maxed out. This is pretty big strain on a GPU, and while it does have dedicated uh, RTX cores, eh, this game is still not there yet. There is clearly some quality in lightning and how all this moves around, but and this is definitely some screenshot uh, slash wallpaper material. But 40 frames, 99% usage, 6.4 gigs of video memory. I don't know. I don't know. So let's go for our last contestant, which is Metro Exodus, and then we're gonna figure out what, how, and why. See you in a sec. So 2080 Ti and Metro Exodus. Now, obviously, since this is an RTX card, uh, not only we're gonna put everything on 4040p and extreme, we're actually gonna enable the RTX, the ray tracing, and you know all the all the good stuff here, because we can. So, without further ado, let's hit continue and see how we get on with this. When it has been years since anyone's heard anything but static and white noise on the radio, who could still believe we are not alone on this earth? My wife, my comrades from the order, my friends, people from my station. Nobody believes me. They are sure that there's nothing on the radio. Sure that save for us, who hid in Moscow Metro, there were no survivors of the last war. We are alone on this planet. And in the Metro, it's common knowledge. But I did hear that call on the radio with my own ears. Yes, it was immediately drawn out by the static. 
But I had heard it. Here we go. Which means that... So, DLSS ray tracing enabled. We're getting 75 frames. 5.6 gigabytes of VRAM. And I must say, it does look pretty nice. So, yeah, it is a clear win over, well, both of the cards. And I am gonna try to not get stuck this time with it. Zalka went up with you. Twice if you learned we've been to a Hansa off limit zone. Have you been to all these ruins? 80 frames, 40, 40p. Yeah, oh my now. god. See all the destruction. And Moscow had the best anti air defenses in the country. If this is how it looks now, imagine how the rest of the world looks. Look, maybe you should come back to the order. Yeah, no, absolutely. No this is what you pay for. Here, or used to pay when you actually had the 2080 Ti available. Ooh, some little stutter there. Dropped all the way down to 40. And we are in underground, a lot of things going on, and we're down to 60 frames, so. I would say without RTX, we would be way better off. space 65 frames I mean to be honest 40 40p all maxed out not bad at all with all of the RTX features enabled you can see some little play of reflections on those ice popsicles icicles oh, what do you even call them but yeah anyway I think this is pretty much all we've always wanted to see in terms of the TI series being stacked up for demanding titles and yeah obviously the 2080 ti will win but then again it's about the price so let's take a look how it all plays out in the end so just to finish this off so obviously um going on to amazon just checking out what are the prices for these cards just to kind of you know justify the means of purchasing one so the msi that we actually had here uh, as a 980 it's not even available anywhere which is uh, kind of sad to be honest uh, <laughs> it's literally just not here at all I do believe you can uh, get your regular 980 Ti for about what 800 or something but at least not on Amazon eBay is full of them but again when it comes to eBay you do know all the risks that come with it and I would say I wouldn't say Amazon is the best place to buy stuff uh, Obviously, there's a lot of different places, uh, part picker, overclockers, you name it, literally. Just do your own research if you're looking for it. Is it worth it? I wouldn't say so. To be completely honest, the 9 series, they will hold up with very good other brand titles. So to say, that makes sense. In terms of you, if you are trying to max out a AAA title that came out in the last 2-3 years, it really depends on an engine and uh, graphics settings. The 6 GB of uh, video memory on board definitely helps over the 4 GB version of the usual 980. And the faster core clock will help and the memory speed will help. But again, Full HD gaming is pretty much what that card is kind of designed to do. So if you are well within uh, Full HD, you definitely are able to crank things out on ultra or very high. But you might need to lower some settings down. So when it comes to 1080 Ti, this is uh, pretty much a, um, not really a shock, but if you look at like the the prices, like it's 1,500, 1,200, 1,200, 1, well, obviously 300, and it, it's not they're not even in stock. <laughs> There's only one for 1.5. I mean, 
this is crazy people are just selling these cards trying to make a buck and it performs really well uh, with most of the titles I would say but uh, again depends on a title for instance playing uh, Star Wars Squadrons or Battlefront or Warzone with an ATTI you will have no issues in 4040p you will be well above 60 frames and then you're gonna get a uh, odd game like Valhalla or Cyberpunk where you will simply not get 60 as much as you want and it's not really down to the card itself the card performs as as it does you know it's down to the software from the developers so at this point I would kind of say yeah it's pointless right so keep in mind that 1080 Ti is 1.5 so if we go for 2080 Ti it is basically for almost the same right so this is Asus Turbo uh, which I have no idea I kind of don't like blower style coolings I kind of like the reference cards but again how many are available like 1500 still I mean, if you have to choose between a 1080 Ti for 1.5 or a 2080 Ti for 1.5, I mean, the obvious choice is going to be 2080 Ti. At the same time, if you're looking for 3060, 3070, the same scalpers are actually selling them for 1500. And I'm not saying that you should buy. First off, 1500 for a graphics card. It's insane amount of money and it's not even the top shelf card anymore. It's been around for a while and it still performs very well and nice. But again, if, if we're going into RTX era and the games are using RTX and DLSS, even for 2080 Ti, it's going to be quite, it, it will have its work cut out for it because the newer technologies, the smaller chips, the better instructions, the new 3000 series will get and if uh, Radeon actually wins with their AI stuff coming to their cards which will basically give all DLSS features to their own cards but Nvidia will never share. I mean, it might even be worth actually look at the Radeon side for this. I'm, I haven't had a Radeon card for years due to their driver issues and I'm kind of team green but uh, I, I wouldn't say this is a good time or correct time to even look into buying a new graphics card unless you have someone who's able to give you straight from the source, you know, someone who works in retail who can put one card aside for you. I know it's, it's probably a dick move to do, but at the same time, the scalpers with the bots will buy out your 3000 series card in two seconds while you will use the time to punch in your card number, which will take you one minute and... That basically means about five different scalpers already bought your card out for you. So, if I don't know, it's, this makes no sense. 1200 for 2080. Nah. So, what I would say out of these three cards, obviously the 2080 Ti performed the best, but it's kind of expected. The second place is rightfully for 1080 Ti considering its age and capabilities and it still holds its own against even such a beast as 2080 Ti with only 12 frame difference for Valhalla and 4040p and well okay Cyberpunk kind of destroyed the 1080 Ti completely um, but oh well you know it's kind of expected as much as uh, it pains me to see this result is how it is. Uh, for 980 Ti, I had this. I had the 980 still. I still have it. I would say I played most of the games basically full HD, uh, high to ultra high in the settings, and it still holds its own pretty well. There is some games that it simply is unable to run, unless it's on medium, and that's very questionable when it comes to frames. But uh, again, it's a four gigabyte card, and if you have 980 Ti. I wouldn't say you have to sell it and move on to something else, unless it's a nice price for 1070. There's literally upgrade path from 980 Ti is very very weird. You kind of need to aim for the higher shelf because upgrading marginally from let's say 980 Ti to 1060, which I've seen and I still have no idea why, just because of the tiny bit faster clock speed, it's stupid. It's simply not worth the money. It is possible, of course, to kind of try to run an SLI, but not many games support it. So unless, I mean, it's very, very, very interesting topic when it comes to how you're going to use your GPU for. If you are happy with your GPU as a 980 Ti currently, just stick with it and play the games you want to play with it and you are currently playing. If you don't like it and you're looking to upgrade, 
you kind of need to start looking around what's on the market and the market is in a very bad place right now so i would say keep the money lower some settings and just sit tight for about half a year or so and let's just hope that the world returns back to normal and with all this i would say this is kind of all we can do with these three cards for now leave your comments uh, tell me your thoughts on this and yeah we'll just crack on again thanks for watching see you guys next time